Good morning. Our topic today is hidden righteousness. Our passage is Matthew 6, chapter 1 through 4. Our Lord says this, Be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of others to be seen by them. If you do, you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. So when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets, to be honored by others. Truly I tell you that they have received their reward in full. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret. Then your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. So as we look at this topic, it might seem as though it kind of goes against the topic we looked at in chapter 5, of let your light shine before men. Doesn't the Lord want us to let our good works be seen for His kingdom, for His glory? Indeed, because that's what the Scripture says. But at the same time, He doesn't want us to do things out of selfish ambition. He doesn't want us to do things out of self-righteousness. So as we read uh, Bonhoeffer's text today, The Cost of Discipleship, I think what he's going to point us to is trying to balance out the extremes of hiding one's light under a bushel and at the same time doing so much outwardly that it becomes a self-righteousness of our own rather than the righteousness of Christ. So uh, he asks a question, and let me read a little bit before that question is asked. Uh, Bonhoeffer says this, the disciples are told that they can possess the extraordinary only so long as they are reflective. They must beware how they use it and never fulfill it simply for its own sake or for the sake of ostentation. The better righteousness of the disciples must have a motive which lies beyond itself. Of course, it has to be visible, but they must take care that it does not become visible simply for the sake of becoming visible. There are, of course, proper grounds for insisting on the visible nature of Christian discipleship, but the visibility is never an end in itself. And if it becomes so, we have lost sight of our primary aim, which is to follow Jesus. And having once done that, we should never be able to carry on again where he had left off. We should have to begin all over again at the beginning. And that would bring it home to us that we were no true disciples. We are therefore confronted with a paradox. Our activity must be visible, but never be done for the sake of making it visible. Let your light shine before men, chapter 516. And yet, take care that you hide it. There is a pointed contrast between chapters 5 and 6. That which is visible must also be hidden. The awareness on which Jesus insists is intended to prevent us from reflecting on our extraordinary position. We have to take heed that we do not take heed of our own righteousness. Otherwise, the extraordinary which we achieve will not be that which comes from following Christ, but that which springs from our own will and desire. Now, I don't know if you caught everything you said in there. Some of the language is a little old, but I, I think the last part, hopefully you caught. We must take heed that that light that we're shining and bringing about is not our own light, is not our own righteousness, is not our own goodness. Lest people say, hey, Pastor Gabe, he's just a great guy, right? It's just him. It's not Christianity. It's not Christ. It's him or it's you as you do some outward work. Now, sometimes people might praise your outward work, but that's where we have to point them to Christ and it has to be done and in a real way. We shouldn't just be like, it's just Jesus. I mean, we could, we could, but sometimes people I've seen people do that in kind of a, uh, a way, too, that um, it is, I don't want to say cheesy, but rather than point out, like, hey, God has changed my life, you know, they're just like, I'm great because God has made me great, you know. Um, so, so that's tough. So it's, it's, it, it, even for me to explain that stuff, because there is this, this hard balance, right, of pointing people to Christ um, and at the same time, in a real and true way, showing them the truth in the depth of discipleship. So here's the question that Bonhoeffer asks that I mentioned at the beginning. And he says, how is this paradox to be resolved? So I want to give a little backdrop before we got to the question. So hopefully that helps you understand it. This paradox between letting it shine and hiding it. Bonhoeffer says to this, we must be unaware of our own righteousness and see it only insofar as we look to Jesus. 
then it will seem not extraordinary, but quite ordinary and natural. Thus we hide the visible from ourselves in obedience to the word of Jesus. If the extraordinary were important for its own sake, we should be like fanatics, be relying on our own fleshy strength and power, whereas the disciples of Jesus act simply in obedience to his Lord. That is, he regards the extraordinary as the natural fruit of obedience. According to the word of Jesus, it cannot be otherwise. The Christian is a light unto the world, not because of any quality of his own, but only because he follows Christ and looks solely to him. But precisely because the Christian life is of its very nature extraordinary, it is at the same time ordinary, natural, and hidden. If not, it is not the Christian life at all. It is not obedience to the will of Jesus Christ. So in a certain sense, he's saying we have to let our light shine outwardly so all can see. But for us, we don't do this to be seen. We don't let any self-glorification come to ourself. So we hide it, it sounds weird, to our own self, right? Making sure that our acts are solely done before the Lord and not for some outward type of uh, praise to come into us. But the bigger part here is that we're, it just simply becomes a natural part of life. We go and we pray or we do a good work because we're not thinking I got to pray and do a good work, but it becomes a natural process as the spirit works upon our life. One last sentence here farther down, he says, otherwise you are simply displaying your own virtue and not that which is, which has its source in Jesus Christ. So I think that's what really hits the nail on the head. We have to always be careful and ever aware that we're not trying to appear to make ourselves be great people and virtuous people but we're just simply living out discipleship we're simply living out our christianity we'll be virtuous not because we're trying to be virtuous but because the word of god has so changed us that as we hear the sermon on the mountain it resonates within our minds we simply live differently so if that's a challenge for you i say Apply yourself to the word. Apply yourself to prayer. Let the Lord work and stir in those areas. We have too many people today that are loud and ostentious and boisterous and out there and making, you know, ways on social media or TV, wherever it may be. And uh, sometimes that does more harm than good. We need Christians that are truly light, that people will truly see their walk and say, this person's not doing it for some following or a mass gain or because he's trying to sell a book or what have you. We just need people to live out their faith in a real way and transcendent way that is in the world but not of it have a blessed day we'll see you guys tomorrow